Creepy Weasel, argu arguably one of the greatest nicknames I've ever heard, along with probably the greatest nick mullet I've seen since Miguel Torres. And Steve Montgomery says that his strengths are his heart, his technique, his cardio, and his mullet. And there's a nice combination. Right hook, left hand behind it again. Short punches by Montgomery. Holy smokes! Your winner by knockout, Steve the Creepy Weasel Montgomery. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It's the Weasel, and this is my tail, and I'm going to creep it to you and cast it to you through the intranet here. Um, turn your ears on. Well, like I said before, you don't need them. I'll just broadcast from inside your head. I walk up to the top of your brain mountain and I stick a flagpole in and that flagpole broadcasts the uh, the radio signals. It's all really scientific, very creepy. Creepific, horrific, creeperific. Yeah, anyway. So how was your Valentine's Day last week? Was it good? Did you and your significant other have a, have a great one? Um, hope so. I uh, just got to obviously get kind of what uh, the elephant in the room out of there. Really, seriously, I got to send my condolences out to anybody and everybody affected by what happened over at Stoneman, uh, Stoneman Douglas High School. Um, and I really, I'm not even trying to look for sympathy. I'm just making the point to people that don't know um, where I work, you know, where I train at American Top Team, that Stoneman Douglas ends up right next door. It's It's our doorstep. The kids at our kids' programs, um, some of my you know really close friends' kids. I, I won't I won't go into all the ways, but the, <laughs> I'm connected in over a dozen ways at least to that place closely. So just um, I really understand the pain that's going on is what I'm trying to say. So anyone out there, obviously you you can't even imagine what some of these people are going through. So I just wanted to, and really quickly too, make a, a huge shout out. There's many heroes that day that are coming out in the stories, but the one that's really uh, developed the story anyway is uh, the one of, of Aaron Feist, the football coach there who, you know, just, he showed what he was about, you know, when, when the, uh, when it was a matter of life or death, he showed what, what his soul was about and it was about giving. And that's, uh, it's just, People think that the worst in human beings come out when they're faced with hard times, but the best in human beings come out when they're faced with hard times. And that's what happened in so many of these stories. And uh, he just he gave his life just to get kids out of the way. And um, there's a lot of stories like that developing. So I know I'm not mentioning a lot of names, but um, that's not what it's about. It's a, just people, please go do your research, research some of these children and adults and and their wrestling coach was taken and just so many things that are just obviously terrible that that goes without saying um there is a way you can help they have a gofundme it's um www.gofundme.com slash stoneman douglas victims fund stoneman douglas victim funds that's s-t-o-n-e M-A-N-D-O-U-G-L-A-S-V-I-C-T-I-M-S Fund, F-U-N-D. I know I didn't need to repeat all that, but I'll end up getting a couple emails. Hey, what was that again? That's how you spell it. Just go Google it. And they've already reached uh, 1,780,000. I'm sorry. Yeah, one million seven hundred eighty-four thousand seven hundred eighty-three hundred dollars of their goal of two point two million. So um, please go there and donate. Please, you know, when it, when the information does come out, find out where you can send letters. Just send something more than just, you know, a post or a, you know a show of support. Not that that doesn't go a long way, but really send something. Send a letter. Send some money. It's just a, it's a terrible thing. And um, when it's on your doorstep, you really, you start to weigh, you know, the reality of situations like that when others go through and makes you a lot more compassionate. Anyway, we had to get that out of the way. Um, obviously, last week was a really hard week. When the weekend got here, um, there was a couple of really good grappling events on for any of those of you that uh, like jujitsu, wrestling, things like that. Um, they're on Fight Pass. And I got to say, 
I was thoroughly impressed. I've I, as much as I love jujitsu, I've really never sat down and watched events of it. I'll watch specific matches or watch specific moves that happen, but I've never watched an entire event, the production, everything like that. And the first one I watched was Polaris Six, and it's uh, it was in the uh, O2 Arena over in London. They had some amazing matches. I mean, the matches I watched was uh, you know Marcin held. Who's an amazing leg locker? I had the for, I had the uh, privilege to train with him a couple weeks ago. Him, him, and uh, a lot of those guys from Poland were in our gym, and they still are. They're awesome to train with, and he is a you know foot locking genius. He's got really good stuff on the ground, but he's got some great leg locks that work really well in MMA. And um, man, he won his match. He looked awesome. He went up against a guy from London who was another pro fighter, and then. Um, a girl, our girl, um, Jazari Matuda looked awesome. She competed against another tough girl and they got into a crazy little leg lock battle. And G did this interesting, everyone, by the way, at our gym calls Jazari Matuda. She's a jujitsu world champion. We call her G, G E for short. It's just, you know, easier than Jazari. And she, G did this really sick little thing where that when they were playing in that footsie battle for leg position, she was putting the bottom. I'm sure other people do this, but I've never seen it. She was putting the soles of her feet against the girl's hamstrings and just using that to like pummel her leg. She it was just really interesting, and she ended up it worked for her because she got a nice straight Achilles lock and uh, tapped the girl within the first round. I think it was like the first five minutes she got her. And um, then there was uh, Ben Henderson, the former UFC lightweight champ. He had a, an amazing match. I can't remember the kid's name he went against, but he was a silver medalist at ADCC. For those of you that don't know, ADCC is like the UFC of, you know, no-gi grappling jiu-jitsu, submission grappling. Anyway, um, that match was awesome. And then in the main event was um, Craig Jones, who is, you know, a leg lock wizard and really good on the ground versus Jake Shields, who, you know, anybody that knows MMA knows that one of the all-time greatest grapplers in MMA, whether you like his style or not, is Jake Shields. I mean, that dude won all five rounds against Dan Henderson, you know, in strike force, just took him down, mounted him. I mean, he this guy is sick on the ground, and Craig Jones heel hooked him in like a minute and a half. And uh, it wasn't for a lack of trying on Jake Shields' part. It's just you can do everything right against guys at that level, and they're still going to tap you because they do more things right. So it's very, very fun to watch. And, uh, man, the production was awesome. They had that really cool stage. I will say the mat was a little too small. Ben Henderson, if you guys didn't watch, he blasted a double leg like three times. They went flying off the stage. Stage had to have been at least two and a half, three feet tall, and they went flying off the stage as he blasted a double, basically tackled this dude off the stage, got right back up the stage. They're like clapping to the crowd. Crowd was so into it, and they had a walk. I, I don't know if the walkout song was for the fighters, but they had a walkout song when the fighters came out, fighters, grapplers, whatever you want to call them. And um, that was an awesome event. And then right after that, I turned on um, the uh, Eddie Bravo Invitational, the Featherweights Tournament. I think it was you had to win four matches to win the uh, prize. And by the way, that the Polaris was 15-minute rounds. And then if nobody won, it went to a decision. There was no points. The Eddie Bravo is a 10-minute round, no points. And then they do overtime, which is like, you know, they do, you can choose from one of two positions, like you take their back with your hooks in, and they have a certain amount of time to escape. And basically, whoever escapes the fastest or whoever gets the submission, interesting overtime rules. But um, they had some really, really sick matches on the Eddie Bravo and in Invitational. And it was pretty crazy. A little Rocky Balboa story. That kid, um, John Callistein, I. Have, I should know. I know John Callistein, I think. he's uh, He was a, um, a last-minute replacement. His coach is Eddie Cummings, who's a real famous jiu-jitsu guy. And um, he replaced his coach, who got sick that week, and came in and, you know, won. I think he won his first two matches by heel hook really quick. And then he – or some type of leg lock. Then he um, he won in overtime against um, – Oh, what's the – Gio Martinez, an Eddie Bravo guy. It was a really, really uh, awesome tournament to watch. Some really high-level stuff going on. I will say the the Polaris, it seemed, it had a lot of wrestling. Like, not necessarily like, 
you know, just strict wrestling, but guys are looking for takedowns. They're looking for positions starting from the feet. I, I like guys, you know, like a Craig Jones or, or any, any type of leg lock guy, really, that can just play a really nice bottom game. Not even just leg lock guy, just a good sweep guy. I like people who can play a bottom game and pull guard, but at least have an entry for that. I don't like, I really don't like the butt scooting. That's very, I don't know. It, it just, even if it's not with strikes, that's a very. I don't mind pulling guard. I don't mind shooting in to then fall to your back to go to a position, but just butt scooting at someone. Come on. What if two guys butt scooting? It's just, I don't really like it. Um, and I, that's what I liked about the Pol- Polaris uh, event. These guys were looking for takedowns, looking for position. They would maybe shoot in on a double. If they get stuffed, they would immediately fall to their back, but using a half guard sweep to maybe then come back up to a single. It's like real combat based grappling, whether it's based in jujitsu, wrestling, whatever. Because to me, I, I like calling it jujitsu, but that doesn't really encompass everything. I mean, it's a little bit of wrestling, it's a little bit of judo, a little bit of jujitsu, a little, I mean, it's a little little bit everything it's just grappling two humans wrestling to tap each other out make them quit without punching each other kneeing or any type of strikes that's it sorry that i had to go into that because there might be people listening that don't know everything i'm talking about jujitsu wise or martial arts wise and um so that's all i'll say those uh polaris and the eddie bravo invitational you guys should check those out if you got fight pass if not go look at some of the highlights i mean Crazy, crazy stuff people are doing with jits nowadays, and I've really been enjoying playing with the leg locks and playing in the gi, and and some of the crazy stuff you can do with your legs in the gi is awesome, and it's really teaching me how to use my hips and making my grip stronger. It's awesome. So enough about jujitsu. I'll really quickly say before I get to the advertisements and then bring our guest on, um, I've been listening to a lot of random music, I, like really weird I don't know if I'm just getting brain damage from the fighting and my CTE is making me (laughs) super sporadic and choose random music and have mood swings with it. But like when you watch, if you, any of you people watch like surf videos, I have two small dogs that I have to leave at home for a couple hours at a time. So I'll put on surf videos for them because of the music and it's got animals in it sometimes. So they start, you know, freaking out for the animals and the music. And the music on there, it's like this underground, like modern day, some of it's old school, like rock and roll, or some of it will be like hip hop, some of it will be like indie music. It's really weird music. It's it's a whole, whole like uh, different wide spectrum of stuff, but it's gotten me on this whole path of new songs I've never heard, and they're so weird. Like there's this one, um, it's like a, I don't know if they're British or Scottish rock band, it's called... Uh, I think the song is called Monolith, and the band's name is Holograms. I can barely understand half of what they're saying, but something about it, it's just like, I guess maybe because I saw some sick surfing in the background to it, when I hear it, I just think of like, you know, sunshine and raging, good stuff, good times, all that good crap. But yeah, this uh, this surf, this binge of surf video music I'm going down is really, it's very strange. Anyway, I don't even know why I told you guys that. Um Let me go ahead and read this advertising before I bring our guest on. We're going to have Cole Miller on here. Um, You know, 20-time UFC veteran. He's a jiu-jitsu black belt. He was uh, one of my first coaches at American Top Team. And, um, dude, just a veteran of the game. One of Georgia, the the great state of Georgia's first MMA uh, sons, prodigies, I guess you could say. I mean, he really made it onto the scene. He was on the Ultimate Fighter Five. Um awesome dude one of my good friends anyway let me go ahead and get to this advertising garden of life empowering extraordinary health you already know the best supplement company in the game i'm so thirsty i gotta take a swig of my garden of life shake right now hold on uh did you hear me swallow oh that garden of life's good garden of life.com promo code is ambassador 20 for those of you that can't spell a m b a s s like ass donkey a m b a s s a d o r 20 just the number 20 don't spell it out so, and you'll get 20 percent off there you go isn't that ironic you get 20 percent off for the promo code ambassador 20 and if not you can go get their products in any store vitamin shop gnc any health food store is going to have garden of life they're awesome they got a whole broad spectrum of products they've got protein all i I won't even go into it go to their website gardenoflife.com i really do use it every day i use at least six or seven of their products every day 
I'm drinking the shake right now. All right, our next sponsor is Pure Spectrum CBD. They are really a phenomenal CBD company, and they're one of these homegrown companies that still pays attention to quality. They haven't gone corporate yet. So when you get their stuff, this stuff is very, very high-grade stuff. There's no THC in it, so it's friendly in all states. And it's really good for you. As I've said before, CBD is basically organic steroids for your immune system. And these guys have a very pure version of it. So when you go to their website and check out their products, if you decide to buy any, when you go to checkout, use promo code the creepy weasel and you'll get 15% off. Can't beat it. That's that's a no-brainer. Our last but definitely not the least. And this is actually real quick. It's wearedapperties.com, but it is my biggest regret that I don't have more suits because these guys really do. They make wearing a suit and tie look appealing to me. I'm always in gym clothes, you know. They're like the nicest thing I'll really wear out is like a collared shirt. I, I rarely wear a tie, suit and tie. It's obviously got to be a special occasion, but I've got it makes me want to go get like two suits that I take care of and that I could, but then I would have like 20 ties from these guys. We are dapper ties. I just rhyme that. Um, and yeah, I would use all their ties. They're really cool. Um, you can follow them on Twitter, Instagram, just we are dapper ties, D A P P E R. And, um, they also have another Instagram that's called being a sir or, or Twitter. And it's just a really cool thing. They post a lot of nice little tips and life lessons. It's fun. Anyway, um, I always say I'm going to read their ad in a different accent terribly because you people barely listen anymore. It takes everything I can possibly do to keep your attention. Still, I'm not getting more than 100 listeners. So here we go. I'm going to read this out in a Pearl Jam accent, and you can just um, you know, walk away, turn it on pause, or turn the volume down. We are Dapertize, yeah, it's a company created by brothers Andrew and Julian. They believe, they believe, they believe that feeling and looking great should be affordable for everybody. So whether you're rocking the suit or tie daily, headed to your first interview, looking classy for a date, or you just like to look good, you need a dip, dip. Dapper Tie Andrew and Julian Have carefully curated Beautiful designs To offer you a selection Of near that airlock And unique and keyword Keyword affordable Affordable Ties 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 Now go to WeAreDapperTies.com And enter the promo code Creepy Yes, that's the promo code C R E E P Y Creeper to get free shipping on all your orders inside the United States of America. Ah, oh, thank you, Eddie Vedder. I appreciate you stopping by. See, I didn't tell you guys that Eddie Vedder was actually coming to read my ads today. So anyway, um, I actually had to call Cole a little bit earlier and do a pre-recorded conversation. And Cole is the man. I, I really got I I did not have my shit together this week. I had my parents in town last week, so I stalled on getting an official guest. Cole was kind enough to just immediately agree to do it with literally like five minutes notice because he had some time in between teaching at his new gym in Georgia. And um, so. I apologize ahead of time for how much I sound rushed in the interview. I went back and listened to it, and I'm like talking too much, scrambling for questions. But Cole's the man, and uh, we made it a good conversation nonetheless. So just ignore my uh, over-anxious sounding tone in the next interview. We'll get him on here. All right. I got my guest in here. You guys, if you've read the caption, you already know Cole Magrino, a.k.a. Skinny Miller. He is a long, long, long time jiu-jitsu practitioner, one of my first coaches ever at American Top Team, taught me a lot about the game along with his younger brother, Micah Miller. What's up, Cole? Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me, man. No, dude, thanks for coming on, especially last minute. I need to get my shit together. What uh, what episode are we on? on we the are episode, what is this going to be? The This is the fifth. This is the fifth episode. You're number five. And it's taken you this long to get me on here. It's just, I'm, I'm ashamed, dude. I'm ashamed. <laughs> it, it's not I'm, happy to ha- I'm happy to 
that you having me. I appreciate it. Damn right. Well, dude, obviously we got to talk about some things. Number one, how is the the gym up in Georgia going? I mean, I, you're, you're all your room rooms on the picture I see, even your beginner classes, competition classes, they always seem full. Yeah, um, it's good so far. Uh, we've been open about nine, nine and a half months. Uh, we have 120 students. Dude. Um, we're – Working hard every day. I'm working hard right now. I'm I'm trying to rewrite my fundamental curriculum. I thought that what I had was pretty comprehensive, but um, I want to make it even more so. So I'm constantly working. That that's actually one thing that's in, I'd actually like to ask you. You're talking about your fundamental curriculum, aka fundamentals for people that don't know jujitsu. Takes a long time to understand just basic human movement. Before you can even start learning a move, jiu-jitsu isn't really moves, it's more concepts. And when I got to you, Cole, you know, I had already had at least an idea of some of the fundamental things like base and balance. How do you start out with someone that's just completely green? Uh, I think that the best way to do it is to learn by doing it. So I don't have the guys spar, but we, we drill um, specific techniques where they learn those body mechanics that you talk about. And we have a lot of warm-ups that kind of uh, ingrain these movements into them. And we try to make it like as if they're rolling. That was uh, one thing that my, my friend Adam Redzevic uh, was telling me because I was asking him for advice on, his desi- or on the redesigning of the program. Nice. And he said that he said when they drill, it should look like as if they're rolling. So you're, you're showing a – a technique on a pass and then you need to show the retention to the pass. Right. And and then in that retention, maybe have the guy pass the opposite way or or whatever, you know. Right. right. The same thing could be applied to submission and submission defense and then from that defense to a sweep. So it when they drill it, it mimics a sequence or it mimics something that happens in a roll because they're not ready to roll yet. Right. People, people go, oh, I had, I had a intro class and I start rolling and I'm not, it's not saying that your instructor's wrong, but I see a high rate of people that never come back to jujitsu because they got in there and, and grappled. They were crushed or they hurt somebody or they themselves got hurt because they didn't learn the proper fundamentals and the proper mechanics that their body should do because when somebody gets on their back and starts choking them, we're going to fight back. We are competitive beings. So um, I have a, a rule that you have to do 20 of the fundamental classes before you can move into the all levels classes That's awesome. where you start to roll and things like that. That's very cool, man. And I, and I totally get what you're saying. You don't just show them a move. You show it to them in a context in which they might have to use it. So you're already getting their mind used to like, all right, well, these are the situations I'm going to be dealing with. And I probably shouldn't try to, you know, like you're saying, some beginner who's freaking out on his back, he's about to get choked, so he starts just flailing his knees around and knees the dude in the eyebrow and cuts him. So he's going to know, all right, well, flailing nowhere, flailing my legs will not get me anywhere, and it's going to get someone hurt, get me kicked out, or get me hurt. That's pretty right. awesome, dude. So, and, and I do let the guys get a, the, the workout portion in, too. So at the end, we either do thing like we do the whole sequence, or we might even do um, – situational sparring so very specific to whatever it was that day so if it was a scissor sweep um if it was like a scissor sweep to mount to x choke then i'll have the guys maybe start for one of the rounds have each of them start in the full guard trying to execute the scissor sweep while the other person tries to stand out of their guard or break grips or maybe start in the mount and the person on bottom their whole goal is to just not be submitted and to escape and the top person's goal is to hold the mount or advance to a back mount or submit their opponent and and it stays within that that realm of which we were discussing that day very cool i that and that's honestly see that's the difference between you and a lot of these other jiu-jitsu coaches is you obviously love competing whether it be fighting you know jiu-jitsu but you really, when you teach, you just have a passion for the art behind it. So it's like you you always reminded me of Pahumpa in your own different way that if like you see someone doing something, not necessarily wrong, but it could be done three ways better, you're on them right away. Like, dude, what are you doing? Why are you leaving that space? Why? It's like, are you serious? Like, come on, dude, you're going to get crushed. You're going to get this. 
So having someone like they're lucky, man, to to be rolling constantly, rolling and doing things like that, and having an eye like yours on them that's picky for detail or adding detail and improving stuff. That's awesome, dude. And especially yeah, the, the twenty, yeah, the twenty I, I try fundamentals. To, I try to be like that with more so with the people that are competing and not so much. No, of course, <laughs> like that. Of course, the guys that are just regular people. But but yeah, if, the, if I know somebody wants to will want to compete, then I. I'm a, I'm a little tougher on them because yeah. a lot of people say that they want to fight, but you find out if somebody really wants to fight, if you can create a little bit more discomfort or Absolutely. dissatisfaction with their performance. But I've seen you do it nice. You know what I mean? I've seen you could portray yeah. the detail in a nice way, whether, you know, you see some white belt mom who's in her 50s with 10, you know, not 10, Absolutely. like two or three kids. Absolutely. I've seen you know how to walk up and say, listen, listen, put your foot on the hip here. You're going to keep in control distance with that. There's a nice way to do things, obviously, but it's always, I just like the simple fact that you and Micah are just, your uh, obsession with detail, I guess you'd say, because I've kind of, I've kind of <laughs> stole say, it. It's all in the details, right? Dude, absolutely, and I, I've tried to steal that same, uh, same philosophy. Speaking real quick about one of your details, I stole today. I got to Lindsay. You know, for those of you who don't know, a friend that was sent down from Cole and his boys up in Georgia, another Georgia boy, Lindsay Jones. He's an up and coming, soon to be awesome, already awesome pro fighter. He, yeah, Cole, he was rolling with uh, Hyder today, helping him for the fight, and they were doing, like, MMA rolls. Mm-hmm. And he uses your exact same, like, back escape. When they were starting from the back, you know, with the hooks in. Mm-hmm. It's the yeah. same same style. Not the same one, obviously. But, dude, I jacked your back escaping skills. All this crap you taught me off back control, I jacked it. And so there's times I'll find myself giving up the back like you talk about in some of your instagram posts where sometimes to get it on the ground it's okay to you know give up a bad position as long as you know where to advance from there and yeah i jacked a lot of your moves over our I, years i, of I try to tell people we expose the back we Ex- don't give the back. there you go that's a good point you bait them <laughs> yeah that's awesome man no, what what it, what is uh what's the competition team looking like over there? Like the guys at least that want to compete. We are getting ready to have our first team tournament on March thirty first. Nice. Um, just a, a jujitsu thing. We're going to take them to the Fuji uh, BJJ um, Georgia State Games, or I think that's what it's called. It's going to be in McDonough. Um, we've got a group of about I think ten guys that are ten guys and girls that are going to want to go compete. We we would have more, but unfortunately here recently. Um, the government had shut down. I'm in a military town, so some of the people were out of work for just a little bit. Well, now that they've started back up, um, they have basically these people's schedules already mapped out for them, telling them that specifically that they cannot uh, or that they have to work the 31st of right. March, which is, a, which is a Saturday. So um, now they're getting a lot of load putting back on, on them from uh, falling behind. So the uh, the Air Force and the government kind of, uh, kept me from having 20 competitors, but we got about 10 guys that know that they're going to compete. Damn it, and, Trump's uh, against jujitsu. <laughs> yeah, we're we're trying we're trying to get them ready. I, I told them to tell the Air Force, like, hey, can uh, can I just do a little bit more jujitsu? Obviously, I'm making a joke there, but our country needs them. So, dude, we'll hey man, morning. our country, nothing wrong with adding a couple assassin skills to the people our country need. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's right. But that is, dude. I'm re- first. I'm just happy to hear how well the gym's doing. How well you and your family doing? I I, I don't know if Micah told you um, when when he was here for like the last three or four weeks. Me and him kind of just went on a drill spree. We were just mm-hmm. kind of coming up with different things. He said he was going to play with them, uh, play with some of the moves we were working on with you. And um, I've kind of been still doing that. I, I since I broke my jaw, I've been on this psycho quest of just grappling as a whole. You'll like it. I've been doing a ton of gi. Ton of ton of gi, and then a lot of leg locks and a lot of wrestling. Yeah, and there's only one way to get good at you know leg locks, and that's just to immerse yourself in the position. It's absolutely you just let's let's start in you foot locking me. Let's start yep. in me foot locking you. Let's start in a fifty fifty position. And, and same with and the let's gi. Learn how, how to do it. I, I always say that the best way to escape a position is to go deeper into the position. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Not to not to go away from it, to go deeper inside of it. Yeah, you, it's and you know it's funny that that same uh, concept happens even sometimes with punches. Sometimes it's better to not go away from the punch, go into it and, and catch it halfway. Or like Absolutely. you said, if your if your foot's you know if they've got your toe in the armpit and they're about to find the heel, you might need to put the boot on and shove it in a little bit deeper so they can't find it. Yep. 
Get a little deeper on that knee line. Yeah. Start work. Start working your counter attacks. Absolutely. The um the gi as well, man. I mean, I, I got to go to Pahumpas a couple weeks ago, but he was out of town for a fight. I'm gonna start going up to his place, and uh, also have been going to Sharks competition class. And I mean, you know how brutal they are there. And um, like you said, dude, sometimes just jumping in the water is the best way to go. And I, I've been really surprised with the gi and the leg locks, how much like, just like a Grand Theft Auto map, the more you drive around uncharted territory, the more map and you know you get, and the more you get to, you get an understanding. The map is starting to <laughs> what be What an clear. analogy. Yeah, I don't know why that pot, like a video game map, you know, it's like, oh, that looks like such a big map to figure out. And then you start riding around it and you figure out the roads to take. Absolutely. But um, that is awesome, dude. So you've got guys competing March 31st in the Fuji. And real quick, just for anyone listening in Georgia, go ahead and shout out your address about where you guys are, maybe a little class schedule, and at least um, tell, tell everybody about your Instagram and fan pages because you really do put out some awesome, awesome posts about different, like anal- analyzing different things from your fights or other fights, and you give some really good insight. Yeah, we're, we're right in the middle of Georgia. Um, we're American Top Team Warner Robins. We're an American Top Team affiliate. Uh, we're called Miller Martial Arts and Fitness. Uh, come on by. We're located right there on the line of Bonaire and uh, Warner Robins, 96 and, and Moody Road. Um, and uh, speaking of the breakdowns, if you want to see what I'm doing with these breakdowns, you can follow me on Instagram at uh, Cole Miller Mar- Martial Arts. Um, follow me on Facebook. I usually just repost this stuff directly to Facebook, but Instagram is where you're going to catch most of the uh, content the moment that it happens. And um, if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, specifically what it is that we're doing and how to do some of these uh, positions that happen in self-defense or mixed martial arts or uh, combat jiu-jitsu or no gi or gi, uh, myself and Brandon McCatherine, we started a website called themmaschool.com. I know a lot of uh, different online uh, technique websites. They are uh, specialty sites. You can get one for Muay Thai or one for wrestling or one for Jiu Jitsu. Uh, but I, I had been speaking with him and we decided to just make an all in one um, website where you get all the tech that you need for all of those various platforms. So if it's something that you think that you might be interested in to help take your game to the next level, no matter what your game is, it's the MMA school.com. That's awesome. MMA, the MMA school people, all you illiterate, non-listening people who have only listen to audiobooks, you go there, you watch videos. It's, you don't have to read anything. So the MMA school.com. And as a quick, just a quick uh, endorsement of that, for the people that don't know, when I first got down here to American Top Team, I was a little bit lost in the fray of all these fighters, and I had a fight coming up. And a friend of mine from South Carolina sent me to a little American top team in Boca Raton that, you know, Cole and his brother Micah, they, they were in charge of the competition team there, whether that be just jiu-jitsu guys, a lot of amateur MMA fighters. And these guys ran basically – dude, I don't know, man. If you Imagine if you guys had some actual like – I mean, you already had talent coming out of there, but think if y'all were actually getting fed talent from the gym. Like, we could have made a super squad at that place if the the building had lasted. I mean, it was you, Micah. We had Blake helping. It was uh, Rosa, me. I'm trying to think who else. Did, we had so yeah, many you, guys. you, Charles Rosa, Gio. Gio, Eddie. Gio took us to the next level. He was awesome. Oh, yeah, Gio went like 9-0 and total between his amateur <laughs> and pro career. You know, Rosa. Fun. Um, but there's so many I'm leaving. I mean, obviously Tobias and, Tobias and all was the knocking heads off. Oh. Uh, we have Brett, Brett Jakowski, Brett, and, uh, Andrew Lutt, and those guys. Oh, <laughs> dude, so <laughs> many people. Squad. It was such a good squad. And like, I remember every now and then we would have someone from the main academy come in to do training with us, and it, they would do. They would get a huge push. That that squad, if if the building, if we had kept that building and kept up like it was going in Boynton and things hadn't gone the way they did, we would have a death squad. I mean, we already did. Like, absolutely. People, people that came out of there were tough as hell. I mean, like, oh, dude, that and and that's what always. Just so for people that don't know, these guys know not only how to coach a mom and a family, and you know, a dad just looking to get in shape. These guys know how to coach young, hungry killers. I mean, you remember Rosa comes off the street with his bicycle, or, or he skateboarded to the gym that night and asked you to spar. Hey, Some I've brilliant. got a, I've got a fifteen year old uh, kid who. Hits like a grown man. He's Love it. Gonna, he, he's going to fight at 145. Probably. Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, 
15 already hits like a grown man. And when we decide to cut this this little man loose, he's going to destroy somebody grown. Oh, I love it. I love it. And he's going to be in that Georgia MMA scene where there's plenty of fights to go around. Oh, that's awesome. Would you, should, do you want to shout out his name or are you keeping it a secret? Oh, no. We're, we're, I'm going to hold on to him for a little All right. Bit. All right. I like that. Um, and real quick, too, I got to do a couple of little uh, nut hugging sessions about your career in the UFC and fighting as a whole. Okay. You were obviously cut. You were one. You and my, well, how long? How long before Micah started fighting were you fighting? Oh, man, I think that I had been fighting two years, but we had been we had been training a comparable amount of time. Like, okay, okay. I think that he started a few months after me, but then he would take months off at a time due to uh, wrestling season in high school. That's right, and stuff. he wrestled. But I think that my, my first fight was in 03, and his first fight was in 05. Jesus, though, 03. Oh, my God. So it's crazy how far, how like, especially in MMA time, how long ago 03 was. But you, Man, were, dude. I fought in four tournaments. I think. Ah, oh, that's the best. How many fights each night? Uh, two. They were always like little four man brackets. I never got the chance to fight in an eight man. But, I mean, still, that's uh, still I think two I fight fights four, in one night. Four man tournaments. That's insane. That's insane. And then I like so so from 03. And then you would have been on the Ultimate Fighter in what was that? Two thousand eight, seven. Two thousand seven. That's right. But it, it kind of aired, I think. And I can't remember because no, that was, was the first was, season. We we filmed January to March, and it and it aired um, April through June. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. because that was the first season. Yeah, that's right. I started training in 07, and I was watching some of the Ultimate Fighter four with like Ken Shamrock, and then I, that Ultimate mm-hmm. Fighter five with you guys was the first one I watched. All the way through. I mean, God. And that was probably, dude, speaking of old death squads, the names off that show, how many either fought for a title, you know, were in the UFC for 10 years after that? I yeah. Mean, yeah, we have, like, some of the the best guys that stay with the company the longest. Yeah, uh, you. Man, Nate, Nate Diaz, yep. uh, Manny Gamburian, Gray Maynard, myself, Matt Wyman, Joe Lozon. Jesus. Um... We oh. had man, we had a lot of really good guys on there. Rob Emerson yeah. was a beast. Uh, yes. Corey Hill, rest in peace. He was a yeah, beast. Absolutely. Um, we had uh, guys like Brian Garrity were awesome. He, I mean, he was a savage. Yeah, wait, uh, I, I think I pronounced his last name Girardi, but I had seen him fight before outside the UFC, and he was sick. Yeah, in his prime, he was like ranked in the world at one forty-five. I mean, he was really good. Yeah, y'all just weren't on Junie Browning's level. I mean. Could have been higher, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so re- a couple of fights I want to talk about. Some of my favorites. Um, obviously, I love the um, the Grigel fight. I think that was your coming out part. I think that was your coming out party as becoming a man <laughs> when you landed that triangle. Yeah. Uh, talk about that for a second. Just even whether it's the emotional release. What's one or two things off the top of your head in the middle of the afternoon when you think about that fight that come to your head? <laughs> Well, first off, I don't think about that fight until the don't. afternoon. But, but I right, brought it up. But right, so. but right now that I'm thinking about it, yeah. um, I mean, that was I mean that was the greatest moment in my life up and you know at up to that point. Yeah. Um, it was. It's just nice when like you train hard, you put everything, you sacrifice so much, so hard for so long, and. Even though that I was, I was. It was one round apiece, and I had been losing that third round. But I just never, I never got discouraged or thought I'm gonna. You know, I have, you know, a, less than a minute left. Um, I'm gonna lose this fight if I don't do something. I just kept fighting. You know, oh, you just yeah. fight bell to bell. You were in a and, street uh, fight. Having that kind of like conviction and having that, uh, you know, rewarding of that conviction and it pay off. I mean, there, there's nothing like that. Hell yeah, man! That's that's another thing I should have said about our death squad. That well, we called it Team Miller. Speaking of Team Miller, Team yeah. Lanky. Um, one thing I and think we, we all took was that mindset: is you don't fight for points and you don't fight for time. You're out there trying to win the entire time. Finish. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a different game right now. Having that mentality it lost me some fights, and I probably should have fought some fights a little bit different because I know that I have plenty of losses. Um, you know, on my record that I was better than the guy, you know, even, yeah, even on that night, I should have just fought it a little bit different. 
True. True. But hey, man, when the shit... I, I always say when you actually get out there, whether you're under the lights, I call it when the shit hits the fan. When it's like, okay, there's no more talk. It's just me and him. There's no more thoughts about, oh, this and that. There's no more visualizing. You're right there. This dude's eyeing you down. You can hear him breathing. It's really silent. That's when it's like, all right, what's up? All this talk, yeah. you're the, you know, so shit happens, dude. You know, and it's it's who shows up that night. Sometimes I you're, I love you're that. right. weren't weren't you weren't you um this this could be wrong. I just don't remember from all our talking. Weren't you a little injured in that fight? Not saying it is an excuse or anything. Just saying, oh, didn't you have I an injury like or something? Stomach, I was stomach sick. That's what then, it was. And then I got injured in the fight. Like I had to have knee surgery after yeah, the fight. Yeah, all types of stuff. But that's a nightmare. Well, this, yeah. Okay, I got a couple more. Fa- well, I saw you fi- before we knew, met each other. My senior year of high school, when I was still trying to decide what where to go, you know, whether mm-hmm. it be college or fighting, I saw the uh, Junie Browning fight in Nashville. Yeah, that was, uh, but that was a no brainer. I-, I knew that fight was coming like that. Right? <laughs> didn't you use? The- didn't he try to take your back and you exposed the back for a second and then use that to get on top? And I think he tried to like come back on top and you locked up the guillotine. No, I hit. I think that um, I went for like a Muay Thai clinch, and he shot in up under me. And instead of freaking out and facing him, I just went for the Kimura as he was attacking my back. Uh, and then when when I put my back to the mat, I went for a half guard sweep, and that's how I got back up to the feet. But that was the moment. Like the moment I got back to the feet, I just I knew it was o- the fight was over because I knew two things: that one, he didn't want to be on the feet with me b- after. The fact that he tried so hard to take me down. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then after the ground sequence, I knew that he didn't want to be on the ground with me either. So, when you know someone doesn't want to fight you on the feet and they don't want to fight you on the ground, the fight <laughs> has been won. Yeah, you get all, all you have to do is not zig when you should have zagged. Yeah, exactly. Just don't screw up. Do what you normally do. And this. Yeah. yeah, and then like less than a minute later, I I threw a hook or something and. Uh, got tie clinch, and then he tried to do that same uh, push through, and then I just I got a guillotine off of it. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. That was not that that wasn't one of my favorites, but that was a no brainer. The um, it was one of my favorites. I didn't get hit the whole fight. Yeah, no. If you're talking, yeah, <laughs> if you're talking about risk versus reward, you're damn right. No, no damage and a free guilt, not free, but obviously just a pure clean guillotine. Right. You can't complain about that. The nope. um. But I think probably my all-time favorite performance from a fan perspective, and I was really I had to teach that night. I actually had to teach your class at Boynton that <laughs> night. My bad. No, it's no. This is what happened though. So I had to teach like your kickboxing or, or some class you had at Boynton. You know the Boynton ATT. And I leave and I go check the result on Sherdog and it said like Cole Miller rear naked choke by Ross Pearson. Like because you were fighting Ross Pearson and it's, I read it the wrong way and it said that you got rear naked choke. Then like my heart sank. I'm like, what? No. Like he, I, w- I would have taken him getting TKO'd. He got rear naked choked by the striker? No. And then uh, I remember like going, oh shit. And then, so I went and watched the replay on my phone waiting for the point of you to lose in the second round. And then you'd throw up the like it wasn't a, it was a jump knee hook cross hook and like one of the hooks landed and the cross landed I think and then you just right to the hooks back done. Yeah, and all that started with just a basic one two. The yeah. one two kind of rocked him, and I saw that he was rocked, and that's when I went for the jumping knee and the uh, the, the strikes thereafter. Nice. Nice. And the only last thing I'll torture you with, it's not even the whole fight, just the, I literally joke with the, um, I got a bunch of friends in my hometown in South Carolina who are like, you know, they're gee holics, dude. They're always in the gi. And um, mm-hmm. I sh- they always follow your stuff and all your breakdowns. And the one fight you had, I, it was against the British guy. You beat him by decision, but you hit. It wasn't uh, really. Andy Ogle. Andy Ogle, yes, yeah. yes. When you hit the gi sweep to the arm bar roll through transition, it, I mean, it wasn't obviously a gi sweep, but the way you grabbed both wrists and you had your knees like flared out against his biceps and he lifted up and then you sucked him in and then sh- like threw him over the shoulder at that like 45 angle. That For the people that don't. That have never seen that. Y'all need to go and watch. Is that is that one on your um, Hello Japan highlight? Yeah, it's on there. Somewhere. All right, good. If, go online, go to YouTube, and look up Cole Miller highlight. Hello Japan is the name of the guy who made the highlight, and you need to see obviously all the other stuff. But this sweep, I've never seen someone hit a gi sweep in the UFC. 
Yeah, I mean, it's one of those moves that I just train all the time, though. And, you know, I have a bunch of guys at ATT. I have, you know, real good guys in the room, D1 wrestlers who have amazing bases, yeah. jiu-jitsu black belts. I, I, I hit that move pretty frequently. So it's one of those moves that you could say that it's high risk, but it's not high risk for somebody who trains and does that move all the time. Absolutely, man. I mean, like yeah. it's a feel move. And you, when you're working it against a guy who's going to test it to its fullest, like you said, a D1 guy or a black belt or both at the same time, yeah. I mean, and you're testing it, exactly, you're going to have a feel for it, which you could obviously tell because you hit it like butter in that fight. Straight to the arm bar transition with the shin on the back of the head. It's a miracle you didn't finish that arm bar. Yeah, I just didn't want to fight it, and I could hear Pahumpa yelling at me, like, get on top, get <laughs> yeah. on top. Yeah, 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 he's fighting all your natural instincts to screw this. I'm going for the arm bar, the, the Cam McCard yeah. mindset of sacrifice all for the finish. Yeah, you ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. Well, I, dude, I appreciate you coming on here. I'm glad you guys got over 120 students. For people in the Georgia area or people passing through Miller Martial Arts and Fitness, I can attest to the level of technique, the level of quality, and how much these guys care. And Mike is teaching there too with you, right? Yeah, just for, for the little bit that he's here, I'm not sure how long we'll have him, but we're grateful to have him and his experience while he is here. Exactly. So we got him. I mean, there's, I think... I think there's five uh, um, black belts here in middle Georgia practicing, and three of them are underneath my roof. So <laughs> There you go, uh, people. It's awesome. There you go. And let me, and so, exactly, he's got three out of the five jiu-jitsu black belts in Georgia, and him and his brother compare, together, I'm sorry, combined, that's a, that's a dream team. Yeah. So I appreciate people you lucky. coming on, my dude. And uh, – I'm loving it up there. I promise you I will come up there. after. I'm actually going to do the Pan Ams, March uh, 8th, 9th, and 10th. So when well, I get what, back. What's that got to do with Georgia? Because when I get back from that, I might have a fa- – I just looked at an email. I have a family gathering March 17th, so that's an excuse to be in the real south. Oh, I got you. So I'll be going back to South Carolina, and I'll swing through middle Georgia and check it out. Yeah, I mean, we missed you on the grand opening because you had to go – Get your jaw broke or something like that. I know I'm a scumbag. It wasn't yeah. broken in the gym. It was it was doing much more detestable things than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, do you want to you want to help me read this disgusting email I got for the what would creepy do section? What it, what is this? It's a, well, people write in emails and it's like either what would creepy do, whether it's fighting related or not, and then there's another one, uh, another segment called legit or shit. So whether, like, you know, some dude who's claiming he's 40 in Kumite death matches, if they're curious if he's bullshit or not because they've never trained before, they okay. can write in the question. I'll play legit or this, legit well, this one, This one's actually, I think they're trolling me, <laughs> but okay. it is it is kind of a good question, and I got it from, a, a, I won't say, I don't ever say the names, but I got it from a medical student. Mm-hmm. So, But it's really sick in the head, but I, I figured I'd ask it for you because we're all both, you know, I got my sickness in the head from you guys. So this is a what would creepy do, and it says, hypothetical, research has shown a new product that improves athletic performance, strength, speed, endurance, etc. More effective than protein or creatine, but not quite as noticeable as something like steroids. It requires daily intake to reap any benefits. However, there's no adverse effects, so like no side effects. And the catch is, it's hobo semen. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, and, and he puts. I, I I think creepy would pass. No, I I know I know, but he says it's professionally obtained and packaged, but it's still a hundred percent pure semen, half a pint per day obtained by <laughs> hobos all over the U.S. Would you drink it? I don't think you would. No, dude, I would. I mean, you know, it, it, actually, when I read this email, I thought, well, if it's not even as effective as steroids. It's like, dude, I'll just go load up on... I would do steroids before I would put a hobo semen in my mouth. Like, I would take I would take the two-year suspension for steroids. I mean, Jesus Dog, Christ. You've you, you got the weirdest people that write in on your show. I've had a couple good questions, but yeah, no, I told them, go ahead and trash, trash, you know, troll, whatever you got to do. We'll make it funny. But, I mean, that's the thing. They put it's not even as effective as steroids. Now, if it was better than steroids, like for real, and it really just did not show up, and nobody would know. Obviously, you'd keep that a secret. 
So if it was like complete secret, you basically have this secret weapon and like your joints are strong. Like you can literally call, imagine being in a double trouble inverted heel hook and they can torque on it all day and it just won't tear. Like that level of durability, I might, might try hobo semen. But other than that, no. Well, good on you, dog. (laughs) Hey, man, whatever it takes to succeed, dude. Lance Armstrong over here. Yeah. Well, I'll quit torturing you. I appreciate you letting me uh, pick your brain for for the podcast. No, dude, thanks a lot for coming on. I'm going to get you and Mike on, or just Micah, but you and Micah at the same time on here soon. Yeah, brother. I'll see you soon, dude. Dude, you're the man. I will see you soon. All right, later. Later. As I was telling you guys, Cole is the man. He always makes it a good interview, even when it's a rushed conversation. So um, I'm definitely, I actually texted him after we had that talk, and we're going to get him back on here with his brother Micah, and um, we're going to have a much better talk. There's so many cool uh, topics we didn't touch on, like, you know, Cole is a good friend of the Diaz brothers, and we've all had some interesting training experiences out there, all great experiences, and there's so many other things we didn't talk on, like the, you know, the MMA scene in Georgia back in the two th- early 2000s, and you know, his experience and when he got to Florida, there's just, there's a lot of cool history that I think is worth telling. And I think it's worth listening to, especially if you're into mixed martial arts. So um, that's pretty much all I got for you guys today. One more time, I just wanted to say, please stop by the GoFundMe.com slash Stoneman Douglas Victims Fund and benefit something to the families, even if it's just a dollar. Let's reach that $2.2 million goal. Obviously, money's never going to do anything at all to ease any of the pain but at the end of the day it might prevent further pain like cost for funeral what what, whatever the cost of something like that would be financially let's help take some of the strain off that of that off of those people so i appreciate you guys listening this is the weasel's tail creep cast officially signing out you can now fall asleep your head is officially free from my rule peace